Candy Soames. Candy Soames and Gabe, Gail Perry. Yeah. I'm back here and it Here's is fun show. music. <laughs> it, isn't this where we're supposed You're to sing? It, I think we're gonna put good. a roof on this place and do the show here. <sighs> In the break, we were talking about the fact that the blooping, there are all, all sorts of things. You make a judgment yeah. what's clean and what's dirty. You know the right. word, right? I was on the Tonight Show one time, and I did a, a joke, and in the, in the punchline, or somewhere along the line, I said, uh, uh, and uh, I'll have a J and B in water, okay? Now, when it got on the air, because I'd mentioned a specific scot, they bleeped it out. They may do it again. And the yeah. next day, after that thing was shown, everybody was saying, looking at me like, what was a terrible thing? You know, I'll have a and water. What in the world was, did he want that was exactly. so dirty? It sounds dirty. You, know? yeah. you can make any word dirty. Now. You know what they do now? They switch it around. It's How's worse. That? They switch they the word. They, in other words, there is a regular sentence, but in other words, it would sound like... And so, like if I said this, it would sound like see it. Oh, they do it back. So, yes, yes. So you know, that sounds close to a fun word. So you yes, know what you yeah. do? How's your zit? You yeah. know how we got around it? How is your zit? Pretty good. Okay. How you do? That, What's your that's right. You, you make anything dirty. You know how we got around it? We said the word backwards to begin with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that's even more offensive, isn't it? Because then you really think, well, what did they change? They there? astered bay. They All right, get, get a word. Get a word. Oh, yeah. do, <laughs> do a word. That's well, no, you can agree. Oh, me and my names. Uh, uh, I was going to say Vidal Sassoon. Yeah. Uh, Gore, Vidal, Gore Vidal, in, in the book, which I intend to read, uh, has a, a, the, the epitomization of what we're talking about because he tells the reader to agree that the names of the five justices who voted in the obscenity case will now, this word will mean this obscenity, this word will mean this, this name obscenity. Will mean this obscenity. And, oh, I see. They give know, a definition. And I was going to try to use that in a nightclub act, you know, so just to funny. come out in front and say, listen, I don't, I, I don't use dirty words, but let's agree that gladiola is a okay. real filthy, rotten word. <laughs> we, we could do that right now. Well, you know what happened but, last night? What, what happened? happened? gladiola me. <gasps> oh. <laughs> How's your gladiola? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's extraordinary what you can do, but it makes it worse. Not Did you really have a gladiola it. before you were married? Often. Oh, but it yeah. really <laughs> makes it worse because it's like, you know, it's dirtier actually than saying the actual oh, thing. Sure. Right. Sure, well, the whole... gladiola. I want to ask you two something. Do you, write, Good. do you write differently? I mean, do you, what happens when you have to write for women? Is it different for you both when you write, you know, for We a write mainly of... for women. You do, I know. Yes. Well, we... it started out that way because um, Carol Burnett was our first real uh, challenge and our first big break. A great gladiola. Gladiola, by the way. Oh, <laughs> seen her Gladiola, too. It's unbelievable. Anyway, um, and we wrote so many things for women that, uh, you know, we wrote Doris Day, Joan Crawford. Can you do Doris she Day? Was, no, I don't. Who but, do you do? But wait, but he do does. Do? We wrote uh, Lorelei for Carol We Tanning. wrote a show called Lorelei. You did? Uh, did you know that? I didn't Big know that deal. you both wrote that. <laughs> but it was a remake of Gentle Fur Blondes, and it was fun. But every night, after the curtain call, Carol Channing would say the same thing, and I would get hysterical. She would do a thank you speech, you know. You dear, dear people of St. Louis and environs. You dear, dear people of Chicago and environs. Well, the opening night in Los Angeles, I got hysterical because she, she went like this. She said, you dear, dear people of San Francisco and environs. <laughs> this is my chance. She went right. <laughs> Nobody told her that they took a plane that day and they moved. Oh, and she's so divine. divine. She's so divine. It doesn't really matter what she says. No, like, she was she's cute. She really got a good laugh. She was probably that. thinking yeah. about a gladiola going to be happen later. You know. Oh, yeah. She was some gladiola she girl. Was right. <laughs> it's funny she you picked gladiola. Weren't there gladiola girls? What was that? That's I've an old, never heard of it. Like a Ziegfeld term or something. I know there's a man from gladiola. But I mean, when you write for women, do you feel like because of the present consciousness of women uh, today, do you feel you're writing social comment? You know, it's really uh, difficult because sometimes what you feel like, I got really in trouble for Sheila Levine mm -hmm. with um, women's Sheila Levine is dead and living in New York. That right. Yeah, we should have established the fact that... Yeah, we that, certainly uh, should. You because wrote it that. was like about a girl who really wanted to get married. Now I was I was trying not to say that that's what you should do. I was trying to show the horrors of it. Mm -hmm. 
but you know, so many people picked it up wrong. In the yeah. book or in the film, they picked it up wrong. I don't know. Um, in the book, maybe. Really? But it's like um, y you have to write what you know. Absolutely. And I have come to a point of being, you know, so liberated, and I keep growing and growing. But I haven't really gotten to the point of writing like the most liberated woman yet. Well, I, I mean, because you don't sit down to do that. You sit down really to write what you know, yeah. you know. And unless you're really someone who's an incredible activist in this, in this, in this cause and want to talk about that, you write what you know. But Gail's incredible because she just finished another book, which is, uh, it's about a man. So now she's writing the man's view. But she's uh, <laughs> incredible. She, it's in first person. As a man. And do you feel Saul your head has Levine. to change? So, Saul I mean, Levine you write about really a woman good. and you write about a man. I mean, do you feel like your head changes and you get into the men well, or you write each other. I used him for we research material. Mm -hmm. as, um, he had this certain... Don't ask. You can say this on Channel 13. Nothing was personal about my life with this second book. <laughs> she would call me up at midnight and says, What's that pill you take for cystitis? <laughs> and I said, please, is there he nothing? He said to me, is there nothing personal? Is there nothing? But I had to ask all the men I knew, including you know, my husband, I'm about totally certain ignorant. Things. I didn't know men got cystitis. I thought it was a woman's no. complaint. Everyone no, urinates. Every Can you say urinate gladiolus? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Everyone yeah. gladiolus. Uh, everyone gladiolus. That's right. That's right. So I didn't use the thing. No, but we argue and we talk about it because we have different viewpoints. I mean... I will say, well, I don't think a guy would do that, especially in the film version of Sheila. We would have more discussions about that because naturally, I, I didn't write the book, but in the film version, it's a different story, and uh, we would have arguments we about really that. We really would. You know, there's going to be an interesting thing that happens. People who are aware of... Call it women's liberation. I always try to come up with a euphemism yeah, or so something for... for yeah. uh, but let's, for the sake of this, a lot of people in creative uh, creative people are, are very much aware of women's liberation there's going to be an acceleration with the people who are coming up with a product that's going to be on television on radio and motion picture mm -hmm. much greater than the people out there it's going to be funny to see what happens because there's going to be millions and millions and millions of women who are very happy to be sex objects to be at home and so forth Long You're time after. after. That's an interesting that point, the oversaturation of it. You yeah, know. but it should, it's yeah. also, if you really are liberations, so you have the right to stay at home and be a sex object. You have the choice, is what they're just trying to say. Yeah, you know, but the, well, nobody has any choice once to be an object. I mean, that's beside the point. Once you're conscious, you well, no longer want to be an object. You want to be sexy. Once fine. you're conscious. But Things get crazy, though, just even in the writing business. Uh, well, like Gail, when Gail and I first started, Gail panicked because... Uh, she, they wouldn't hire women, and uh, they wanted to talk dirt. They wanted to say gladiola. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and they thought they could. Oh, so they were afraid of hiring you. women, so uh, and I don't care because about gladiola. we were a team. It was all right, so they. She hired. got in on you, did yeah. she? Yeah, yes. And we, so lately, with the women's trend, you have to cut away. We, we, we with, the, with the women's trend, what happens is more now men are being turned down. I'm sorry, we. Well, uh, it doesn't hurt. It'll balance only have itself women. out. No, yeah. it'll, but we've got some beautiful women yes. we'd like Mention you to meet. Oh yes, we've got three gorgeous ladies: Ursuline and Gaviola and Carla Borelli, who are going to be back with us. Right Sandra Gaviola.